let's talk a little bit about what's happened so far right uh, so far many people thought oh modi's cabinet would be different he didn't even change the basic portfolios usme ek badlav aaya hai that shivraj singh chauhan uh, is now in the agriculture ministry but usko chhod ke there is no change significant change at all no change in the importance given to mr amit shah uh, from all available information the bjp is going to keep the speaker's post the bjp has kept all the key portfolios there is nothing right now to tell us that the modi cabinet is different in any way from previous governments right so even if the opposition has tasted blood let's go by what we've seen so far what what do you pick up from the decisions that mr modi has taken so far see uh, mr modi is a very seasoned politician and probably one of the rarest of the rare politician who has uh, emerged in indian indian seat so to to imagine that opposition morale is very high and the uh, modi will surrender uh, that's not going to happen he knows he's also indulging into the psychological warfare and uh, to not change his cabinet ministers not their portfolios itself is an indication that he realizes the kind of challenges he's going to face so he's also putting up a brave face he's also sending out messages to the opposition and others that look don't take me for granted don't think that i have become weak i am still the same prime minister which has ruled the country with the iron fist in the last 10 years but the change is already visible the change is look at how rajnath singh has become suddenly very important he is coordinating with the all the all the alliance partner how the kiran rijuju has gone to mallikarjun khadge and met him and had a cup of tea could you could have could you have ever imagine something like this in the last 10 years it did not happen this is the same prime minister which did not accord the leader of opposition in the lok sabha to the to the congress party so things as the things looking same things are also changing so my submission is that don't expect that he will change overnight he will not change overnight but yes there are subtle uh, nuances there are subtle hints that uh, yes i am a bit accommodative i will uh, try to consult as much as possible if not me my senior colleagues will will do that but you can't pressurize me to do something which i don't want to do i will not change for that level uh, uh, for that level but has the um, do you believe you will see a more conciliatory modi i agree with you on the rijiju meeting kharge this was unimaginable in the last two sessions of parliament where there was mass suspensions in fact of members of parliament of the opposition but do you believe that we will see a more conciliatory prime minister or 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 do you think we don't know that right now uh conciliatory is a slightly hard uh he will he will try to project himself that he is willing to uh, adjust a bit to accommodate a bit that that, that that's the because please understand the 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 last 10 years the nature of the government has been a macho government a government which will not succumb to any anybody's pressure whether it is the farmers whether it is shahin bagh or whether international pressure look at the, the kind of language which has been used by the by the external affairs minister whether it is canada and whether Tina and others also. Uh, so, they built the image of a macho, macho government and a macho state. To climb down from there uh, will be uh, will will be will not be good for the government itself. Because the government is going to be built from the top down. And if the government is not going to be built from the top down, then all the institutions which have surrendered before this government in the last ten years suddenly will try to get the autonomy of their own, and then the problem will start. like the problem was started when manmohan singh government was there the report of the cag and others had shown that if these institutions are given autonomy becomes independent then what can the problem they can force and they can uh, provide uh, to the government so uh, modi modi knows this he is one person who has a lost a single election in 2009 24 again he has not lost the election he has only lost the majority of his party so to run a government where he doesn't have Jai is not his habit, but he also knows, being a pragmatic politician, that this uh, he has to live with this. So, uh, my submission is that within uh, after some time, he will try to have the majority of its own in this Lok Sabha itself. 
If that doesn't happen, then he would like to do something extraordinary. He'll pose a question and issue with the people and said, I am, I am lame duck. I can't do this, but this is what the country needs. So please help me. I'm coming to you. Give me the mandate. Either of these two is possible. And third point is that if anybody thinks that the Nitish Kumar and the Chandababu Naidu will support this government, uh, uh, no end. I'm not buying the argument uh, for the simple reason, because these two politicians, their past is witness to the fact that they have changed sides like nobody's business. So it is again that Nitish and uh, Chandababu Naidu on one side and Narendra Modi and Amit Shah on the other side. It's a relationship of distrusting partners. They will keep distrusting each other. They will be cautious to each other and they will watch out that other is not trying to hit him or backstab the other person. Let's, uh, let's pick up your first point about how you believe that, uh, which I agree with, that the prime minister will want his own majority. He can either do that by breaking parties uh, or, or getting other parties to join the NDA. You know, whether we don't know who, but there are possibilities. 